just a, a trip up. But both of them were intentional. The scandal on it ultimately meant something which would trip someone up, sending them to destruction. Now, biblical literacy, you got friends that say, I believe the Bible is literally true. Every word is literally true. Really? Not this section. This is called hyperbole. Jesus doesn't really mean to cut your hand off and poke your eye out. He doesn't really mean that. It's a gross exaggeration to make a point. Well, can we be honest? If it really was true, then, then things would be very different. Really good people would only have one eye. They would wear monocles, not glasses. You know what I'm saying? And gloves would be sold as singles, not in pairs. Okay? If this was literally true, things would be very, very different. Okay? He's trying to make a point. He's exaggerating to try to make a point. And what Jesus is saying is that anything that continually seduces us into sin should be ruthlessly rooted out. Here's why. Those things, whether it's issues or attitudes or behaviors or addictions, whatever, those things are your terrorists. They're your disease. And they're not there. They're not making your life any better. They're making your life harder. And they have to be intentionally sought out and destroyed. And unfortunately, they can't be managed. They have to be destroyed. If it's a habit, a relationship, even if it's something you enjoy, if it destroys you, it has to be eliminated. This is not the atomic bomb approach. What's the old saying? Bomb them all, God will sort them out. That's not the plan. The plan is not to explode your whole life. This is a laser-guided, microscopic surgery that you are to go in and cut out just the things that are causing your destruction. So it's not this all or nothing. It, it, it's intentional. It's specific. Let's tell the truth for just a minute. Our, um, our stumbling blocks, um, sometimes we don't fall into sin. Sometimes we dive into it. Because we want to. True? Well, not you, but your neighbor. Okay? Stumbling blocks are more like tar pits than they are just a pit. Because they're really, really hard to get away from. And we've all seen the pictures, or at least the, you know, the movie reenactment of the animals caught in the tar pit, and they can't get out, and they try so hard, and they can't get out. And there's the one Gilligan's Island where he's caught in the quicksand, and he can't get out. You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, and that's really, that's really what our issues are more like. It's not like we tripped up, we get up and go on our way. They really, they, they keep us stuck. And these habits and addictions, we want to stop, but we, but we don't know how. And we, and we try things, we try systems, and we try uh, organized groups, and we try this. And my question is, have you tried Jesus' way yet? And Jesus' way is, just cut it out. Stop it. Have you tried that? Because if you haven't tried it, then you haven't tried everything. You might have tried everything you're comfortable with. But you have to try everything. I had a guy a while ago, many, many months ago, say to me, Tom, the computer is destroying my life. I have a gambling problem, and I'm on it every day, and I'm going to lose my house, and I'm going to lose my family. What should I do? And I said to him, give me your computer. He said, I, I can't live without my computer. I mean, it's my job, it's the way I do I said, then you don't want to quit bad enough. Tom, i got to have my computer. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're telling me that the computer is destroying your life. Give me your computer. No, I'm not going to do that. Then you don't want to quit. Listen, people don't change until the pain of change is less than the pain of staying the same. If I can stay like I am and I'm on an 80%, pain level, and that's okay, but change is 90, I'm not going to change, but once the pain of staying the same gets 90, and changing is only 80, then they'll change. you got to cut it out. Whatever it is, just cut it out. If you smoke it, drink it, don't go out with people who do. I, I mean, come on. We, we, we know where the party is, we know who's going, we know what's going to be there, we know what's going to go on, we go anyway, and then we get hammered, and we walk out and go, it's not my fault, it's my friend's fault. No, it's your fault! You were there. You knew when you went there what was going to go on. And if you have that tendency and that's your issue, then just don't go. It's not like you went to, got drug out to your car by some magic power and it started your car and GPS took you there. <laughs> Come on. And if you have one of those cars, I want to ride. I want to see what that's like. Just cut it out. See, as human beings, we think we're clever. We think we're smart. 
but we also stupid and we have the chance to get enslaved to anything as people good things even can enslave us did your mom ever say to you don't sit so close to the TV did your mom ever say don't leave the refrigerator open everything's going to thaw right and don't sit there, you know, don't all leave the door open. We heard them all, right? Well, you know what? You can abuse your body doing good things. You can exercise too much. You can. So we can become enslaved to anything, even what looks good. And my question is, can you walk away from it? Can I walk away from Diet Coke? I have. Oh, what are you shaking your head for? I've walked away from Diet Coke many times just to prove to myself that I'm not addicted to it. I like the way it makes me feel, and I like the way it tastes, but it really isn't good for me. I don't know what's your thing. We, we all got one. Our captors are different. Our captors are different. Some of it's our music. Some of it's our entertainment. Some of it's our friends. Some of it's attitude. Some of it's anger. Some of it's our tongue. Some of it's blah, 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 blah. Our captors are different, but our condition is the same. We're all stuck. We're all stuck to something. And today, there's only one person that can pay your bond, pay your bail, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Only grace can pay your fine. I know you guys have been following the story of the little girl and the mom who's sitting in jail. They're trying to raise money to get her out of jail. Ain't nobody can pay that fine like Jesus. Whether she did it or didn't, grace is the only way to break the chains. It is the only way. God willing to forgive. God willing to enable God willing to help us grow up and move on. Only Jesus can pay your bail. I've said it before. The secret to living like Christ, the secret to being a little Jesus, is not trying harder. It's giving up sooner. It's getting to the place where going, God, I can't do this. Instead of, God, I'm going to try, I'm going to try, I'm going to try. I didn't mean to. Instead of trying harder, just give up. Just cry uncle and say, I can't do it. And allow Him and grace to step into your life and, and, and to help you, to help you deal with this stuff. First, you've got to admit you've got a problem. And second, you've got to do your part, which is to get rid of the problem as best you can. And third, with His power, to stay away from it. Oh, only God can do that. Only Jesus can do that for you. I can't. Your spouse can't. Your friends can't. Substance can't. Money can't. Fame can't. Success can't. Nobody can do it for you like Jesus can. The cure is not counseling or therapy. The, counsel, the, 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 the solution is a radical heart surgery. This is a heart issue. What will I give up? What is it that's owning space in my heart? Oh, I, I have the right to be mad. I have the right to be bitter. Guess what? You're renting space in your heart to somebody. All you're doing is...